adjustments for the Red Army when you first start this bad boy up. <laughs> Like because the turn, the first turn is a whole week. You just lose five hundred thousand guys right off the bat. It's just gone. Oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, it's only two hundred sixty-five thousand on the first turn. You lose the rest uh, after that. But another half a million are trapped in a gigantic pocket. So we got. <laughs> 5,022 guns, 2,050 tanks, 5,000 planes. Yikes. Big yikes. And that's just the start. That's just, yeah, that's how it goes. On the 22nd of June 1941, invasion of the Soviet Union began, opening up the Eastern Front and committing the Germany to a two-front war. Now, it's only the Eastern Front from the Germans' point of view, so you know what? We're calling it the Western Front. This is the Great Patriotic War. This is not World War II. This is the Great Patriotic War. I think it's bullshit that they don't... Like, when you play as the Soviets, you should have a different startup screen. It should tell you Opening up the Western Front of the Great Patriotic War. The Axis Powers Offensive, invading along a 2,900 kilometer front that stretched from the Arctic Ocean in the north to the Black Sea in the south. Now, you can't actually play the Arctic Ocean part. That's a like theater box. But that would be a fun game. Do you know what the operation was called? It wasn't called Barbarossa up there. It was called Operation Silver Fox. Such a good name. Yeah. I think it's like Sliberfuchs or something like that. It sounds gross in German. Yeah. But. I like American better. Yeah. Silver Fox. And it was followed up by Operation Reindeer because the, the division that the German. Yeah. The, but the German division was the 14th Mountain Division and their logo was a reindeer on a like yellow field it which actually looks like a soccer team in england i think it's called N nottingham or something like that and uh they named it after the logo of the division huh. and the fact that there's reindeer in the north there's a double whammy I do like reindeer. yeah Anyways, the Germans committed about 3.8 million men, supported by 600,000 vehicles, 600,000 horses. At the start of the invasion, 80% of the available Soviet military forces in the West had been deployed along the border that faced Axis territories as their first strategic echelon. The deployment of the remaining 20% was on the Divina and Dnieper rivers, as the second echelon, and they were meant to serve as a spearhead for the Soviet counteroffensive in case of a German invasion. That didn't work out so hot, because at the time of the invasion, the Red Army was in the process of reorganization and modernization. Its capabilities were great re greatly reduced from the purges of the 30s, strongly affecting the quality of the officer corps. Moreover, the standing and morale of the Red Army had been shaken as a result of the disastrous winter war with Finland. On the other hand, after the successful campaigns that had brought Europe to its knees, the Wehrmacht had consolidated itself into an experienced army with good training, organization, excellent officer corps. The titanic struggle between the two major powers and their conflicting ideologies had just begun, and it'll only end when one of them is completely destroyed. Which is probably not true for a German victory because the Soviets would have not needed to be destroyed. They would have needed to quit in some way. Because, like, completely destroying the Soviets would have taken time maternal, essentially. Like, 
how the hell do you destroy all of Russia? Like, they gave it a good crack, but... I don't know. Alright, so that's where the game starts. You, uh, you click go, and then uh, you watch this disaster happen for about 15 minutes. And then you get to move your air guys around. So, uh, that's pretty much where I'm going to be for the next uh, half a turn. Now, airs, air units in, um, in War in the East can be done either manually or you can give them over to the AI by clicking on this button here. And when you do that, the AI will shuffle uh, exhausted units to reserve. So, if uh, I don't know exactly what the threshold is I think it's like 30% or something like that so if they're really low on planes they just get them out of there and they'll automatically shuffle in high strength reserve units with high experience levels but we're not doing that because frankly when I tried out the the AI air assist the AI did more harm than good so I'm not going to do that this time um, the, the pain is the first turn is really, really tedious because everything is all spread out. Everything's all screwed up and you got to somehow consolidate all of these bad boys into actual useful groups. Uh, and for one thing, we've got some of these guys trapped behind em enemy lines. We want to get them the hell out of there. Otherwise they'll die. Um, so that's that's one of the major objectives not not there's not a ton of planes that get trapped in the pockets so it's not like a huge deal if you lose every single one of them um i'll just close off the turn summary real quick uh but i mean this is still a few planes you don't really want to lose these guys you know i i mean i don't know what what the point of you know, setting them up for failure here is, but I guess it's just something you have to initially deal with. Um, now, this guy is already pretty wrecked. It only has seven planes in it and one broken plane. So I mean, this is not a very strong unit. This should probably be moved out, get, get up to the reserve as fast as you can. Um, so... You stick them on retreat, and uh, that doesn't necessarily do much when you're on in this mode, but basically means that they're not going to try to engage. They've got a bunch of these I-53s, I which are fighter bombers, uh, kind of trash fighter bombers, if I'm being completely fair. And one of the cool things in War in the East is you can actually... Oh, you, you click on it the right way you can actually get a description of all the equipment types um, but this guy's repairing so but I think you can move them all even if he's repairing it's my first time doing manual control so I'm gonna have to learn all that stuff and essentially just to to move them around you you take their you bought their box here and you drag it around. Um, so if you select Zodinia there, and then you go back and you right, right click and you do execute air transfer, you can do either immediate or planned. They will try to bail out over to Zodinia here. Zodinia. <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, and so you just click that button and they'll try to move over and in this case it was successful which is good we've got a couple other guys here this is uh the ninth i say strategic air division i think that's what it stands for i don't know something in russian i'll have to look that one up sad but the reality is these guys they're not sad. They've got 202 planes, and we want to get them the hell out of there. 
Now, this is a mix of a whole bunch of planes because this is an entire air command. There's a lot of planes in this bad boy. And we want to make sure none of them are trapped in the pocket. Because um, we have this 11 sad. And uh, let's see what this... Because Zidinia has 7% uh, full. So we can get a lot of these guys out of there. We'll go back to the 11 sad. And you can see where they're stationed. They're stationed at these three airports here. But let's let's try to move these guys back even further. Uh, if we can. Because we do not want to die. Let's see if we can do that. So now this this bad boy is getting a little low, but that's okay. Um, the thing you do worry about a little bit is the air miles on these planes, because uh, they can get essentially worn out just from flying not even from flying combat missions but just from flying um, these guys have no planes so I don't know even why they're here let's send them to reserve um, these guys again no planes Sorry, 19 broken planes. Um, so they're pretty useless. What about these guys? This is all kind of learning how to do all the controls here. Uh, maybe we can stick them in another airfield. Okay, so we want the eleventh sad. I do not know these controls sometimes. Like I'm just trying to select the bloody airfield and it won't let me. Okay. Well these guys let me. Okay. They will let me. Why is this box so gigantic? I have to immediately get them out of there. Okay. Is anyone left in this box? Just these guys. I really want to get these out. But why the hell are they not moving? not really understanding why the box is immobile. It could be that this base is out of fuel. I think that's what's going on. Oh, yes. Okay, so that's what's going on. I used up all the gas. But that's okay because we got a shitload of planes out of there anyways. Um, so I'm fine with that. We can send these guys to the reserve, I think we can oh maybe because their entire AOG is not escaped they can't be sent yet that's probably what we're doing here okay, 
any of these guys be sent to the reserve? Okay, well, I think I did my best there to get those guys out. Now, let's see if we have anyone up here. Yeah, we do. Oh, great. What is this thing? That fuel? Ammo is depleted and the air support is depleted. But that's okay. Um, if we can get them up to there, that would still be good. Could send those guys to the reserve too. Okay, so they got rebased. <coughs> Because the, the strategy here with that I'm trying to do is to just get everyone the hell out of this uh, potential pocket in Riga. Um, now, I don't think uh, any of these bad boys are going to break out. So, I mean, realistically, we're, we're talking about a rifle division, a security division, maybe. Maybe this mechanized division, if we can get them out. And then a bunch of headquarters and some depleted tank divisions. But, like, this tank division is pretty messed up already. Like, we're talking about a TOE of, like, 50. So... That ain't good. I mean, they're supposed to have 95 armored cars, and they have nine. Uh, all good things. They're supposed to have four infantry guns, and well, they have zero. Would you look at that? They're supposed to have 210 tanks, and well, they still have 137, I guess, but they're probably like T26s, which you might as well not even have a tank at that point. Um,. Oh no, these guys have T thirty fours? Oh no. Zero. Zero T thirty fours. T thirty fours are bad, I guess. Oh, this is actually not a bad division. It's not as bad as I thought it was. But it'd be good to get them the hell out of there. Because these guys are serious tank divisions. These are um, like actually strong divisions. Now normally, I mean, the last time I played, they didn't take Riga on turn one. So this is actually way worse a situation in some ways. Because at least if you can hold Riga, you have a chance to bail out through that port, which is a lot bigger. But you don't even have Riga here. So you've got these two ports to try to get your units out. So you're, we're going to have to prioritize who we get out. But I guess we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit. Because um, realistically what we need to do is bring in a bunch of reserves just to try to block up this area around Peskov. Um, now, one of the tactics I kind of understand now is that if you can fight before these sections of marsh or forest or whatever, you, it slows down the tanks a lot more than fighting after them. So ideally, we would want to actually fight along like this line here because then, no matter what, they're going to have to cross some sort of rough terrain. There's no like clear terrain through here. It's going to be rough, rough, rough through our territory. So they're not going to be able to move as far. And that's critical because... 
Otherwise, you're going to have Vaskov surrounded before you can even get reinforcements to it. Um, as for the pocket, uh, these guys are screwed. There's no getting out of the pocket. That's that's the reality. It's too deep. With this is three full hexes of um, you know contested terrain with strong um, Panzer Grenadiers and Panzer divisions. It's just it's not feasible. You're not getting through it. And and kind of the same deal when if you get this pocket closed down here and Le near Lvov, like this whole region here, once this closes, there's not really an easy way to get out either. So whatever you want to get out, you got to get out early. Um, just because you, you don't have the fighting strength to counterattack and break out of pockets at this point. Like none of these units are strong. They're all weak. This this whole pocket, even if you combined all of them, it somehow got them up to good TOEs. The combined pow like military power here is just so weak. Um, especially after the first week, you just you got nothing because they fought. They get, they fight hard at this point. They they lose a lot of troops. Um, like some of these larger divisions here still have a decent amount of fighting power but you know they're only sitting at 50 s supply to start the game uh, so after a couple of weeks they don't have any supply unless you fly it in but flying it in it isn't really viable either because you got to fly over all the flak and all that stuff um, but because they're isolated they're not gonna get any supply unless you fly it and they're not really rocking on toe either like you know, a combat effective division is anything I would say above 75 to 80 percent. These guys are pretty far from combat effective already. They haven't done anything. They just got their ass beat. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's the situation we're in. It ain't good. All right. So let's see if we can get any. I don't even know what else we have for planes in this area. Oh, this is a weird... Why the hell are they all the way down here in the pocket? What do we have here? Not very many planes. It's only 14 planes. I-15s. We're going to reassign these guys to something that's under... Um, the Central Air Command, or whatever it's called. What is it called? Western Air Command. Uh, maybe we'll assign them to 11. Oh, can I not even click on it through this? That's insane. you got to go all the way up here. All the way down here. Click these guys. Reassign. What did I say? 11? They're already at 4. So this would put them at five. These guys can go. We'll put them direct to the Western Air Command. Because that's fine. Okay, so now 11. This doesn't have fuel, so they cannot get out, I don't believe. And that's fine. We got a lot of planes out of there, so it is what it is. I mean, I mean, this is all you can really do early game is just try to escape with planes. It's not necessarily about using them to do anything at this at this stage of the game because you have to pull them all out and then reorganize them just to be useful. Um, like, you really don't want to waste these kind of planes, these bombers or or any of the fighters even. If you're gonna waste planes, it's gonna be the fighter bombers, but because you get you build a lot of those really fast, but you don't you don't really want to waste good planes, so to speak. All right, this guy looks like he could have a unit trapped somewhere, but I mean these are some dangerous airports to be in, so let's pull him back um, since he's under the southwestern air commands. I think we're going to be able to hold on to these airports here. 
Maybe not so much of those. Uh, yeah, let's... Ooh, that one doesn't have fuel. What's this one at? This one. Let's send them over there. At least now they're they're out of immediate danger. Let's send some of these guys over there too. What else do we have? Sixty-seven. It's Stanislav. That's eventually going to fall, but it's fine. Then leave him there this turn. What else do we have? Anyone on the danger zone? Got a couple of these guys. Who do these guys go back to? Everyone's on ground support. Which I guess is fine. We do probably want to do a little bit of interdiction at Riga once they get going. I mean, would it be awesome to be able to interdict their supplies at Konigsberg right now? Yeah, but it just it ain't gonna happen. The the first chance we get for sea interdiction is gonna be Riga. So that's where we were. We're going to set things up to do that. But that that's going to be next turn. We can't do that this week. Um, so with the southern guys... I'm going to put them on rest... Rest and flexible. What else do we have? Sixty one ninety. Let's give this guy to the Questionnaire command. And then I think that's where I'm going to call it for now.